around 300 million years ago, Earth's continents came together to form a massive supercontinent called Pangaea. The forces that created it and eventually tore it apart caused huge land masses to crash into each other and grind against each other, leaving behind a lasting mark on the planet's geology. One of the coolest places where we can actually see the evidence of these ancient events is near the Bay of Fundy in Nova Scotia at the Cobequid Fault. The landscape here still tells the story of the powerful forces that shaped it so long ago. Our very own research scientist, David Piper, has spent decades studying this fascinating region. Now, he's taking us on an exclusive journey along the Cobequid Fault, where we'll get a first-hand look at the geological clues left by the Earth's tumultuous past. So let's talk a little about the plate tectonic history of this area. We can think of it in three phases. In the first phase, a couple of small microcontinents, think of something like Japan or, or New Zealand today, split off the great southern continent Gondwana and moved northwards and eventually collided with the northern continent called Laurentia. These two microcontinents were Avalonia, which is the block of the Earth's crust to our north here, and the Maguma terrain across the Bay of Fundy. In the second phase, Gondwana itself, and in particular what is now West Africa, collided with North America in the southern US. In the area of the Canadian Maritimes, Gondwana just grazed past us. And that grazing motion, that sliding motion, was what created the Cobequid Fault. The third phase was where this great uh, universal continent, Pangaea, that had formed, a hundred million years earlier, started to split apart. That splitting apart took place along the old contact of the Maguma and Avalon terrains and created rift basins. As the splitting apart continued, basalt erupted from below and gave us the headland we see out there at Cape Door in the near distance. Selowing that, the Atlantic Ocean started to open up. So we're here at a location called Brookville Rock on the shores of the Bay of Fundy. This is probably the best place to actually see the central zone of a fault. If you look at the rock here, you see it's almost a slate. There's a strong foliation layering in it. And these little white patches are pieces of quartz vein that have been stretched out by the movement of the fault. This particular fault would have moved largely horizontally. From looking at folds like this, we can tell that the side to our north, over here, moved to the right. The side to our south, with this pink rock, moved to the left. So here, looking back, we can see the core zone of the fault, Brookville Rock on our right. And as we look round at the outcrops, at the cliffs here, we see that there are blocks of different colored, different ages of rocks. And you can see in places such as over here that some of the rocks are intensely folded. You can see uh, 
little kinks in the in the in the rock. Uh, there's some larger scale folds as this sort of loops over and comes back down again. Just as we saw over at Brookville Rock, there are little quartz veins throughout this rock. These quartz veins form when fractures open in the rock and water that's running through the fault is able to precipitate quartz. So on this particular slightly shiny face, we can see sort of scratches, uh, parallel lines that run almost horizontal. These are created by the fault movement and they uh, reinforce the regional interpretation that movement on this fault was predominantly horizontal. Here we're the community of West Advocate and we're about 15 kilometers from Brookville Rock. The Cobbequid Fault runs through this area of no outcrop where this little river runs down. And on the south side of the fault, you see these red sandstones, locally known as red rocks. In this area, the Cobbequid Fault was reactivated about 230 million years ago to form the edge of a rift basin, a desert-like rift basin, perhaps a bit like Death Valley in California. And these red sandstones were deposited by occasional flash floods of uh, little rivers. What we see here, down here, are rather evenly layered sandstones with a few pebbles in some layers, probably created by sheet floods on the floor of this desert plain. But here, you'll notice there's quite a change at this level. And we've got a packet here of pebbles, of blocks of red mudstone that have been ripped up from the banks of a, of a river. This is a little channel deposit in cut out by the flooding river. Here we're in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. The earliest indigenous people were here about 12,000 years ago. Later on, the Mi'kmaq mined copper out of Cape Door and they traded copper tools as far away as the Great Lakes. The Mi'kmaq used agate from the basalts for tools and also for jewelry. So now we're on the site of the old city of Londonderry and it was one of the largest known iron ore deposits in the 19th century. Iron ore isn't the only mineral deposit along the Cobbequid Fault. The settlement of five islands was the first underground barite mine in Canada sometime in the 1850s. It didn't last for very long, it was a small deposit. That barite was used as a filler in marine paints and initially was shipped to Boston. Later a factory was built in Five Islands to make marine paint with the local barite. But after about four years, the factory moved to the big city of Halifax, presumably where there was a bigger market for paint. The idea of Pangaea came from people thinking on a global scale. But if you actually want to go as a tourist and see the assembly of Pangaea and the splitting apart of Pangaea, the geological evidence, the geological consequences, and just stay in one hotel while you do it, go to Parsborough.
The geology of a region can tell us a lot about its history. Check out the video on screen right now to see how scientists are studying the effects of the last ice age on the geology of northern Labrador. Make sure you do all the YouTube things, like and subscribe, and keep an eye out for our next video.